I don't understand why some person would harm my son. He had five broken ribs, lacerations to his liver, a broken ankle. He had bruises on his head and behind his ear. He had a bruise on his bum and scratch on his bum. He had a bruise on his cheek and a scratch on his cheek. When I seen the doctor and they told me this, my jaw dropped. When we got to the children's hospital, they did, I don't even know how many x-rays and CT scans on him. They did blood work, they poked, prod, touched him everywhere. The children's services had got involved and they had said that the injuries, the extent of his injuries were not caused by the accident. They were caused by abuse. I'm like, okay, who abused him then? Because me and Nick never touched him. We always changed his diaper, the normal handling of a baby. So why is this happening? Where was the baby sleeping? He was sleeping in the back room. But I mean, what was he sleeping in? Crib? A bassinet. Bassinet. How would he have fallen out of a bassinet? When I ran into the room, I found, uh, I seen the two cats run out of the room when I opened the door. The cats did it? Sir, I have reason to believe that it was the roommates because I went you back. You just said it was the cats. So which is it? The roommates came in and knocked the baby over? No, that's how I found him. And you were home? Yes, I Why was. Why would these two people want to beat up a two-month-old baby. They have prior uh, history in... Of violence? Yes. Uh, the day of the incident, uh, Nick asked if me and my roommate can watch the baby so he can go smoke. He said not to worry about the bruise. He just fell out of bed. And he hands us the baby, and he goes outside, and we notice that... Uh, his lips were blue. Uh, there was red on his neck. His chest was starting to bruise. Uh, his face had a bruise on it with scratches. We then went outside and um, showed him what was going on and told him that he needs to go to the ER. He refused. He has, uh, in the past, uh, aggressively burped him to where we could hear it outside. He would uh, try to get him quiet by shaking him would hold his mouth shut and I would have to step in and tell him that uh, look you're gonna screw up the baby's development he turned and he said that uh, look I can do whatever I want as long as he's still breathing Jasmine just stood there and made her food and didn't say a word and how was the baby gonna fall off the bed if you had blankets around him he turned, he turned around. And he turned around like what, like this? No, like he was pushing himself like he would do to roll You over. know two months old can't crawl, they can't do anything. Sir, you would... At two months, they can, at two months they can barely lift their head. That's a fact. I know we didn't do it and I don't understand why he's the one that's being accused and charged of this. Have I... you been... Listening so while you've been yes, backstage. Yes, I know. And yes, and I know. are you impressed with your fiance's uh, answers? Uh, not, not to all of them. No, I'm no, not. No, they're kind of shockingly bad. I get to the hospital and I find out that the baby has been in X-ray and had taken over 30 X-rays. Found out that the baby had been in a CAT scan for over 45 minutes. I do know that there was five fractured ribs on the baby two sp spots in his arm that was broke, lacerations to his liver, his ankle was broke, and he had a handprint bruise on the back of his head. He had a bruise on his cheek and one on his bottom. He's only two months old, he didn't deserve that. Everybody has their, their moments of frustration, whether it be with a baby or anything. If my son broke my grandson's bones, I'm gonna break his bones. When you said on the tape about the five broken ribs, two years ago, I was uh, coming down in the middle of the night and I slipped on my stairs and I fell on my back and I cracked two ribs, you know. And for the next six months, I was in agony. Like, you know, every deep breath I took or if I sneezed or if I laughed too hard, man, it was like somebody took a baseball bat to me. 
This little baby had five broken ribs. Five. five fractured ribs. Right. And I'm a grown man. Yeah. I'm used to pain. This little baby born into the world, lacerated liver. Yeah. Did you cause any of those injuries to your baby? You answered no. Did you ever shake your baby? You answered no. Uh, we gave you the test three times, and you passed all three times. <laughs> Nick came here. Oh, by the way, were you happy with the results of your lie detector I was. test? Were they accurate? They were very okay. accurate. Nick, you came here and you took a lie detector test, and we asked you, did you hurt the baby's arm by catching him as he fell off the bed? You answered yes. Other than his arm, did you cause any of those other injuries to your baby? You answered no. Did you ever shake your baby? You answered no. The results came back all the same to each and every question. And it came back that Nick did not tell the truth. What? What? I didn't, I didn't hurt him. So Steve, as you know, I've done thousands of child abuse cases. I test for child protective services as well for, as, uh, for police departments. What I did with his test is I tested every component of the child's injuries, from him causing the injuries to his claim that he broke the child's arm by the child falling out of bed, as well as shaking the baby. In utilizing the scoring algorithm, which is the algorithm developed by the United States Department of Defense for the FBI, the CIA, the Secret Service, it gives his results 0.2, less than a quarter of 1% probability that he is telling the truth. Not even a half a percent, Steve. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I believe that you have covered up for this guy. I've covered I believe up? that you know, you knew what he did. Yeah. And I think your biggest piece of <laughs> is. And you yeah. can get the yeah. off that yeah. She's phony. And that was a brilliant performance. Oh, you know, she came out, she, she got caught in two lies right off the bat. She passed. Hey, she passed, I still think she is covering up for you. I think she didn't do it, but I think she knows what a hothead you are. I think she, in your moments, you told her what happened and she's covering up. And I think you thought you were come here and somehow. And I bet you if we check your browser history, you were on there searching how to beat a lie detector test. I guarantee you, we'd find that on your browser history. Guarantee it. I'd bet a million dollars on it. I'm sure you would. What's that? You will. So you did look on how to beat a lie detector test, right? Right? Yes, because my heart. Okay, okay. And why would you research on how to beat a lie detector test? Because my heart has been racing ever since I got off the plane. But I if you just been tell able the to truth, why would you need to beat it? I am telling the truth. Yeah. Do me a favor. When you're next 4th of July, when you have a lot of time on your hands, and you're just sitting in that cell, and you're looking out the window, and it's a beautiful day, will you write me a letter? Will you write me a letter and just say, here's the confession, Steve. Now, now there's no sense in saving my ass. I can't be saved. I'm in jail for the next 15 years. You were right. I'm sorry I almost killed my son. Will you do me that favor? What if I'm proven innocent? By, by who? A letter too. By who? The judge. Oh. Yeah. The jury. Either way, if you find that, if you find that to be the case, and you're a free man next July 4th, I want a letter from you either way. And with that, get the off my stage. If you like what you see, all new episodes are coming and you do not want to miss out. Click subscribe now.